Hi, I'm Kevin Hill, and today we're going to do a beautiful winter painting just in time for Christmas, and it should be a lot of fun. And if you're enjoying these and you want to see more, be sure to leave a like and subscribe for more painting videos. All right, let's get started. Now, as you can see, we have a simple drawing of a couple, well, I guess that's one house that just sort of hooked together. It's got, got a double roof thing happening, which is kind of fun. And then let's go ahead and just drop in. You can see, let me show you my palette. I just got a bunch of pretty warm colors going on here. Let's just drop in some warmth in the background. I used purple because I'm anticipating here, see, my sky potentially touching. And you know what happens if we use something like blue. Oh, bad news. <laughs> That's what happens. But purple will just kind of gray it and everything will be wonderful. So there you go. I'll run this right up kind of close to the house. Maybe not quite down to the house because we'll put trees in and around. But at least that gets you somewhere close, isn't it? <laughs> there. All right. That's gonna be that's gonna be good. We'll put some other clouds and things back over this, but we just need to make sure we have a lot of warmth in the background. Very important today. I think it'd be fun to throw some beautiful purpley clouds up here. Actually, it's a similar color that I was sketching with. Just a little red and blue and white all thrown together, plus whatever mud sneaks in there is wonderful. <laughs> we like that sort of thing around here, don't we? Keeps our colors working together. We don't want our colors all separated. That's not that's not fun. Not fun at all. <laughs> there we go. The reason it isn't fun is because it makes your painting kind of disjointed. Your paintings look so much better when you just mix the colors together. And I don't mean to make mud. I mean to, you know, make, con make them consistent. That's what I always try to tell people when they're struggling with colors is, you know, try to mix one color on top of the other or just bring your colors together that way. Because then you get a much more professional look out of the final result. It's always fun when colors are working together. <laughs> there we go. So that, there's your helpful tip for the day. All right, now we're going to kind of bring this more peachy color down because I put just a tinge of blue up there. Not enough to create green, but ooh, I was pushing it. <laughs> there we go. So now I can put some red right over that and it should be nice and safe. Little tiny strokes. Don't go too big with your strokes. A lot of people want to come up here, including me, and go really quick like that. I'm going to today, and that's really fun. I love doing that. But just today, I feel like some slightly tighter strokes would be probably more appropriate for the effect that we're going for. Now I'm going to work at adding just a few soft trees. And these trees are very simple and easy to do. I'm just smudging them. I literally am not going to worry about this sort of thing because I just want some softness. If you make them really crazy, although they'd be really kind of pretty, wouldn't they? But they would compete with that house and that's not what we want. Plus, I'm thinking now, at, you know, obviously me thinking and it actually showing up on the canvas are two different things sometimes. But I'm thinking about, <laughs> I'm thinking about a little snowman. I've never done one before ever. Not for fun, not for anything. So we'll see if it works. I have no idea, but I'm just throwing it out there. I kind of want to do a snowman. Mm -hmm. So we'll see. I guess we'll both know. Hey, it wouldn't be the first time I've done something new for the first time with you guys. There. So some of these trees are kind of bushy trees and some are, some are the evergreens. And if you guys are wanting to see some really good detailed evergreen lessons, but we actually have the Evergreen Lake painting now as a full lesson and it's got some of the most detailed evergreens I've ever done. So if you want to go check that out, you can you can do that. It's a really good lesson. You can download it too if you don't want the regular DVD. Those are of course all available on the website along with everything else. Now to sort of keep this painting manageable, I'm going to do this underpainting area here and say, ooh, <laughs> yikes, I don't think that color is going to work because there's too much blue. I was going to say in sections, but I got distracted. <laughs> there we go. So here's what happens when you throw down a color that you don't want. You just sort of put another color around it. There's my palette, by the way. This is my second palette. This is my first palette. <laughs> there. Ah, oh, much better. And I like that yellow now, kind of mixed in with the rest of all that other stuff. Okay, so what's going on here is we want to create a glow within the underpainting. If the underpainting doesn't glow, the highlight's not going to glow. It all starts here. You've got to have a good, solid base to work with. Otherwise, just, you know struggle endless struggle right and you guys know what i mean so get some depth to your underpainting and your highlighting phase will actually be really easy we'll just sort of set these colors down i know i want a lot of light here a light source is pretty much straight from behind i think that's the light source right there yeah whatever so but a lot of light's going to come from the house there now set that brush down pick up what is that that'll be all right i guess and we can kind of melt all these colors together. <laughs> there we go. See, I did some what looks like maybe bushes. Well, okay, they don't look like bushes yet, but they will, hopefully. <laughs> there. Not too much color here. I want it to very quickly, right over here especially, go right back into the purpley tones. 
So I'm going to pick up purpley tones and throw them in. And yes, purpley tones are <laughs> a, well, okay, it's kind of artistic. I was going to say it's a real term, but nah, not so much. Purpley tones are kind of just fun. There we go. Now I'm just finishing up, kind of wiping down pretty much all the snow with a paper towel. I did it two or three times. You don't want to just uh, with the same paper towel because what'll happen is you'll get paper towel shavings all over the place, you know, stuck in your painting. Not good. So use three or four of them and then that's looking pretty good. Not much is coming off now. And then, oh, my brushes are a mess. <laughs> Yikes. What happened there? Okay, then you can take a clean one and just sort of knock off any loose paper towel shavings that you might have. If you do it right, there won't be very many. Okay, cool. So now, <laughs> now let's go ahead and just grab some red and purple, I guess, brown. Okay, good enough. And let's start blocking in these houses. Well, I guess it's one house. It looks like two, but it's not. We'll make it look like one. Don't worry. This is an extra roof bit here. I just want to make sure this is clear. This is an extra roof bit. That's very important. It's the way that the snow can get off the roof. Gotta have those little things correct. Otherwise, people, you know, you'll put so much work into it and people go, oh, that doesn't look right because, and it's something dumb, like, you know, like they, you didn't do the house right. Like you painted it perfectly, but it just, you know, in real life wouldn't work that way. So do watch out for stuff like that because that's always bothered, <laughs> bothered me. I've always too much work to put in a painting to have something silly like that happen to it. So there you go. All right, I'm kind of working it out. I would call this a mid-tone. Different colors are okay to use, but don't go too crazy yet on color because color is coming. <laughs> there we go. Nice. And then this little attachment. Gotta have it. Well, you don't got to, but if you want to, you can have these little attachments that are really nice. They add a little extra something to the painting that I think is really cool. All right, now on this side, we should go just ever so slightly darker. Yes. Cool. And then, if we want to, we can take a little black. Watch this. And we're doing, being really quick here with the underpainting because I want to put a ton of detail in the highlighting stage. Let's just come right in and drag down. And once I'm done with this, I'm going to wipe it all off. So just note that that's what I'm doing. Now I'm going to add a little extra sparkle to some windows that I just threw in. I just had the, the little the three-quarter brush, I couldn't think of the name for a second, the three-quarter brush. And I just put a little color in. And now at first I put them in with orange, see that? And I also wiped down very, very well the area that, you know, kind of the general area. You won't be able to do it perfectly, but just do your best. And then you just put a little bit of that down with orange, and then you come back with a little yellow on top of the orange, and it's a little safer. Otherwise, you could easily get green. There. Plus there's some red in that, so that helps. Cool. Put it on thick enough that it's bright. You don't want a lot of texture to show, you know what I mean? Like scratchiness. You want them to be fairly thick. Not too many brush strokes. Or, or keep your brush strokes all going in one direction. That would actually be better. Vertical would be good. Now let's go ahead and see if we can drop in a few highlights. And of course I start with pink before the orange and before the yellow. If we're even able to get any yellow down here. There's not a lot of blue in here, but boy, I, I do see just tinges of green every once in a while, which is just a sign that we have got to be careful. It's just normal, but what are you going to do, right? Now, what I'm going to do is just drop in soft little patches of highlight, and I don't want craziness, so I put down a little color. I'm using three quarter, by the way, of course, and then you just brush it out. See that? Feather it into the background. The lighter touch you use, the better, and it's important that, I mean, the the filbert brush is amazing for a million things, right? But it's important to use a soft brush for this. So you want to use either the three-quarter flat or the detail round. A stiff brush will cut right through and it'll be way too much of a mixing issue. What's nice about the red, well the pink, is it mixes with the purples and with anything and it will not cause any problems. It just goes, see that, it kind of goes like that gray color, which is nice. So you may want to use this even as an underpainting over the yellows before we attempt putting any any yellow in. There won't be much. <laughs> there you go. But we should do some, shouldn't we? There. Now if we're careful, we can add a bit of an accent highlight. The way that we'll do that is, rather than going straight in like a pencil, hold it off to one side or the other, and that helps you to layer the paint. This is, of course, the detail round brush. It's a good soft brush for this sort of thing. Don't go too crazy, because if you do too much of this accent highlight, then it's kind of 
well, kind of loses its impact, if you know what I mean. Yes, there we go. All right. Mm, that looks good. And then you can kind of smooth it all together if you need to with the blender brush or something else. There. Mostly in the middle. That's all you want. You don't really want to take this too far out. A couple of strokes actually in the foreground, a slightly more, um, slightly darker color probably would look good as well. Let's go ahead and put a little highlight on the top of this roof, just while we have all these beautiful colors going. No reason not to get it done right now. I put a, another kind of mid-tone on there, so I had the underpainting, then the mid-tone, now this beautiful highlight. And this highlight has a little yellow, the mid-tone has some red. It's the same idea, and I keep repeating this because we don't want green in our painting. And let's face it, sometimes <laughs> stuff like that can happen. We don't want it, so we're going to do our best to make it not happen. There we go. That looks decent, not too much light on top. And you'll note that that beautiful sliver of light there kind of shows that roof off pretty well. That looks good. And we're going to go with a little more light right on top of this one. And let it quickly fade down. Now you can see I quickly dropped in a little Christmas tree right in the middle. I just thought it'd be kind of fun and it kind of covered up a little bit of a dark, you know, it just makes the painting look better. I don't know, a little bit of a dark spot I wasn't super happy with, so I thought, well, we'll put the tree right there. <laughs> That's how you fix stuff. Plus I knew I wanted a Christmas tree in front. Uh, well, maybe not in front. I was probably gonna do it over here, but over here actually makes more sense. So there's our Christmas tree. Now we're gonna dot on these beautiful little There we go, that's good. Gotta, gotta have fun when you do stuff like this, otherwise you go kind of cross-eyed. <laughs> there. Yes, look at that. I'm carefully rubbing away all the excess paint that I can from inside a little snowman here. We're gonna do it. I decided we are gonna do it. <laughs> so let's see how it comes out. First off, we're gonna need a kind of a purple color just to be consistent with the rest of the painting, obviously. There we go, this is the mid-tone. Okay. And you kind of want them to be ovally as far as I can tell. You want it to be ovally. You don't want them to be too rounded. Cool. You gotta think gravity, right? <laughs> don't want them, I mean, I'm not saying that you can't make perfect snowmen, I'm just saying I think it looks better for the painting do ovals instead of circles. Hey, that's just me. You guys do whatever you want. All right, now, nice little dark color and start shading this thing. Actually, there we go. Looks good. And then I'm gonna wipe my brush out really, really good and we're gonna try to highlight this. I'm gonna, of course, go with my pink first. There, just a nice rounded object. This is really is not complicated. It's just actually just a lot of fun. <laughs> it's kind of cool. Never done one before. It's not so hard. Now let's add in a little bit of a shadow. We don't want too much, just kind of, you know, something to show there's some cool snow in addition to just warm snow. There, that looks good. Mm, I love that, doesn't that? Doesn't that look pretty? Just slide that right in and around all over the place. Mm, that just adds so much. Do that right over here. Bring that in. Just mush it in. This one's not near as important. You can allow this to kind of become muddy and a little bit more grayed down. That doesn't matter. That's not nearly as big of a deal as the highlight. Cool. Be sure to leave about 50% of your tree just straight up dark. Now one of the very last things that we want to do up here is just drop in a couple of blades of grass. Only enough to sort of show us that we've got a foreground happening here. Because let's face it, there's not a lot of detail in the foreground. We don't need it. We don't need a lot of detail. But what we do certainly need is something that lets our viewers know that this area is way closer. And honestly, look at the snow. We made the snow down here just a little bigger. 
that helps with that effect, but it doesn't do it all together. You gotta have crisper lines and more detail. And that's where the little blades of grass come in. They provide those crisp lines. Not too many, you don't wanna go crazy. It's just not, not something that we need. But you certainly, actually a couple of pink, a couple of light pink ones would be really cool. Mm, I love the colors in this painting. Warmth, beautiful, just nice colors, you know? Mm. Don't go crazy with those light ones. Those could get out of hand before you know it. Back to the dark ones. <laughs> there you go. Too much fun. I've had fun with this one. This is a good one. All right, maybe over here. All right, well, I think we're done. I had a lot of fun. I hope you did too. Don't forget to check out our website, DVDs, and Brushline. Thanks for watching.